Welcome back to Midpoint. Left Coast reporter at Newsmax.com, James Herson, kind enough to join us for a second segment. Great time of the year for movies, obviously, and one of the ones I'm really looking forward to see, American Sniper, Bradley Cooper in the starring role. This is a Clint Eastwood movie. Talk about this. Is this going to be successful, do you think? Oh, it already is successful. It was in limited release and broke records for per theater numbers, and uh, the critics love it. Um, and of course, it's an inspiring uh, story about a true American hero, uh, the, the greatest marksman in the history of the military, uh, Chris Kyle, uh, the late Chris Kyle, and played by Bradley Cooper. It's getting a lot of Oscar buzz, but the overwhelming concern, and I have this concern as well with insiders in Hollywood, is that Clint Eastwood has the potential of being snubbed um, for two reasons. One is because of his routine that he did at the GOP convention, which made him a kind of a bit of a pariah in Hollywood social circles. And secondly, because the content of the film doesn't fit with the political views of those that vote, the voting members of the Academy, about 6,000 people. And this happened to Clint Eastwood before. You remember a few years ago, there was a film called Grand Torino, and critics loved it, the public loved it, it did well at the box office. It was totally snubbed with zero nominations, um, including a directorial job that almost everybody thought was impossible because he turned amateurs into actors. Uh, this might be Clint Eastwood's last director project, the last chance for the Academy to honor this guy. Uh, not that he hasn't had Oscars, but you can't honor Clint enough. He is such a legend in the business. His body of work encompasses the last century and this century. Mm. And American Sniper is a must-see movie. Oh, that's great. Boy, what a fantastic career as an actor. Now turning into a, a wonderful director, as you mentioned. He's had several great movies over the years. Let's turn to Alibaba. The word that the giant Chinese company may buy a Hollywood studio. Is that sending shockwaves throughout the industry? Oh, absolutely. Alibaba, uh, it, you know, they're... Uh, Founder Jack Ma basically was able to have meetings with uh, some of the major players in Hollywood, and that's because he has um, a huge amount of cash. I think it's $25 billion from the IPO, the biggest IPO ever um, from Alibaba, which is a very unusual company. Uh, you can't buy shares of stock in uh, actual companies in China based on their laws, so Alibaba set up a Cayman Islands corporation and that corporation is selling stock and has rights to the profits of the home Alibaba, which is described as a combination of Amazon and eBay. But one thing to remember... But J James, if you James just... I want to get in there real quickly because I'm wondering why oh. a studio and not a production company? Well, you know, I think that they already own production companies and they already have joint ventures with uh, film companies uh, in this country. And... This guy, Jack Ma, is a movie buff, and he th wants to be a mogul. So he wants to own a major player, and I think he will. Exodus criticized in this country, but it's actually Egypt that is banning the movie. Talk about that. Well, we don't believe in censorship in our country, but Exodus has managed uh, Ridley Scott, who is a fantastic filmmaker. We're talking about the guy who's responsible for it. Gladiator, Blade Runner, and Alien. Well, he's been able to alienate everyone with Exodus. With people of faith, he alienated the Christians, Muslims, Jews. He alienated the critic community. Uh, they, they savaged the film. And it is a really bad movie. But who in the world told Ridley Scott that it was a good idea to depict God as an 11-year-old bratty schoolboy? Doesn't anyone in Hollywood understand that would offend people? And it did. Um, and in addition, of course, he wants to come up with natural explanations for things like the parting of the Red Sea, and he cuts the spiritual soul out of the story and creates a cinematic carcass in his wake. And so the movie's bombing, and it's, it's a lesson, you know, not to insult people of faith. Now, Egypt is banning it because they say it's historically inaccurate, uh, perhaps Egypt has the same complaint that people on the left in this country did, and that is that arguably, historically, people of color in the movie are cast with white actors. And Ridley Scott made things worse, much worse with some of his tweets 
which suggested that uh, he didn't hire people of color because he wanted professionals. And it was horrible. He even poured kerosene on the fire. So he is really, um, it really has a tin ear when it comes to these kind of movies, as did Darren Aronofsky with Noah, because if they had followed the template of the 1956 film, Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments, and just tweaked it, yeah. they would be have the blockbuster of the decade. Yeah, tough year for biblical movies in 2014. You mentioned Noah and Exodus. Actually, pretty good year for TV with Mark Burnett doing his series on the Bible. And James, that's all we're going to have time for. Fantastic segment. We really appreciate your insights on Hollywood. We hope that you have a very happy new year. And as always, you can see your information right there on Newsmax.com. Thanks so much, James. After the break, from Ebola to Obamacare, the biggest health stories of 2014.